I found something that looks like it might be a pretty cool product and it's called the Air Whirl Crisper. It says that it can turn an ordinary pan into a stovetop air fryer. So let's open up the box and see what's inside. It comes with a grill rack, the lid itself, which also includes a temperature gauge, the handle and motor housing, which also houses the batteries for the fan, a silicone fan blade, and an instruction manual. With the addition of a fan to circulate the air inside of the pan, I could see how, in theory, this would work. The lid does seem well made of tempered glass and stainless steel. The edge of the lid is designed so that it can fit multiple size pans. I do like the fact that they included a thermometer to help monitor the temperature, which I think is extremely helpful because a lot of times we might know what setting to use to cook something on, but we may not know the temperature. Included are some instructions on disassembly and cleaning the lid, which includes removing the silicone fan blade, the handle motor housing, and also the silicone seal located in the center. Following the instructions, it says to remove the battery cover by turning counterclockwise. And it takes three AA batteries. Okay, let's see if it works. All right, all good there. There aren't any further instructions on attaching the motor housing and handle to the lid, but I'm pretty sure I can figure it out from here. So I put that on, turned it counterclockwise, and it locked into place. And I'll turn the lid over and put on my silicone fan blade. Let's check it and see if everything works. And it does. It does seem to be moving a lot of air. So it'll be interesting to see if it can match how well a normal air fryer works. The lid itself is a very straightforward design. One push to turn the fan on, one to turn it off. The lid also has three sets of vents located around the perimeter. According to the instruction manual, the lid does require use of a 10, 11, or 12 inch frying pan with a minimal depth of 1.75 inches. It's also designed to work at temperatures below 500 degrees Fahrenheit. And it says to always use the grill rack, which I completely understand because you do want the hot air to be able to circulate around your food. Now even more interesting is it says to always line the inside of the frying pan with aluminum foil to prevent spilled food particles and grease from burning and damaging the pan coating, which if you're cooking at really high temperatures, I could see that being a potential problem. And finally, it says to not preheat your pan or thaw unless required by your food's directions. If the Air World Crisper is everything that it claims to be, it may be a very good option for people who don't have room for a traditional air fryer. Now, one potential issue I see is I spent $60 for the Air World Crisper lid. Price-wise, that cost might be a little hard to justify when the, the price of some air fryers has gotten pretty low. I just picked up this seven quart digital air fryer for $40, which is $20 less than I paid for the Air World Crisper lid. So without any further ado, let's give the Air World Crisper lid a try and see if it can keep up with a traditional air fryer. I'm going to be using a 10.25 inch pan today. Unfortunately, it's probably the only pan that I have that will fit the Air World Crisper lid. Most of my cookware is stainless and it does not work on the induction cooktop that I'm using. First, I'm gonna line the bottom of my pan with aluminum foil. Next, I'll place the grill rack in the bottom. Now that that's done, I'm gonna do a side-by-side -side comparison on the cooking times between the Air World Crisper lid and a regular air fryer. So we'll be able to see if one cooks a little faster, a little slower, or maybe a little crispier. First, I'll be cooking some frozen chicken tenders. And since I am kind of limited on the size of my pan, I'll be cooking three chicken tenders both in it and in the air fryer. One advantage already of the Air World Crisper lid is there is no preheat time, but I do need to preheat my air fryer. Okay, so it took a little over three minutes for the air fryer to heat. I'll put three similar sized chicken tenders in here. All right, I've got my chicken tenders in the air fryer. Now I'll turn on my cooktop. Mm -hmm. 
and start the fan. Okay, it's been cooking almost 10 minutes and it's time to turn the food as you can see. So I'll flip my chicken tenders over. Now, one interesting thing that I've found so far about the AR World crisper lid is you can see the temperature here is only about 150 degrees and it's been running just as long as the air fryer. And you can also see that I have the temperature set to 400 degrees. The metal rim of the Air World crisper lid is very hot, so I know that it's getting plenty of heat. So let's turn these and have a look. They're definitely not as hot as I was thinking they would be. So I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong here or what. I did make sure that the lid was fitted on tight, or as tight as it's going to get. So I guess we'll see. Okay, the air fryer says our chicken tenders are done. So let's check those out. over 200 degrees so I'm sure that these are definitely ready to go let's check the temperature on the chicken tenders that are in the pan and I'm quite sure that these are not going to be ready They're very soggy and not even to 100 degrees yet. So I am not sure why these are not cooking even better than this. And I know there's nothing wrong with the induction cooktop because I use it all the time. So I'm going to continue cooking these for a little while longer and see just how long it does take. And if it gets to be too long, I'll probably just finish them up in the air fryer. But to try to get them to cook a little better and get the temperature higher inside the pan, I'm going to increase the temperature to 480 degrees and just to show you that there's nothing wrong with the induction cooktop it's getting very hot but for whatever reason it's just not getting the chicken tenders cooked near as fast as the regular air fryer okay it's been about seven minutes so I'm going to take the lid off and flip those chicken tenders one more time I'm not even going to bother checking the temperature right now because I can tell they're still kind of soggy and they're definitely not done yet. Okay, I gave it another 10 minutes. So let's have a look at the chicken tenders now. So that's a total of 37 minutes that I've given these to cook. I think they might be done 197 degrees they're definitely not very crisp so they are done let me pull these off real quick and we'll compare them to the ones in the regular air fryer looking at the chicken tenders you can visibly tell that there's a difference the ones in the traditional air fryer are much more crispy the ones cooked in the Air World Crisper are not really very crispy. Almost soggy. And it took an additional 17 minutes on top of the initial 20 for them just to reach the same internal temperature. So at this point, I would say that the Air World Crisper lid is not on par with a traditional air fryer but we're not done yet next up let's try cooking some fries in both the air fryer and in the pan with the air world crisper lid and see if it can do a little better job on these first i'll preheat the air fryer 
And I'll even give the pan with the Air World crisper lid a head start. Okay, suggested cooking time for the air fryer is 400 degrees for 20 to 25 minutes. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, it's time to turn the fries in the air fryer. Oh, they're getting kind of crispy there. I'm not actually going to turn them, I'm just going to give them a shake. And I think I'm going to reduce the time a little bit because they are getting pretty crispy. So let's just go with six more minutes. Now, the fries that are in the pan with the Air World crisper lid had a little bit of a head start, not much. So let's check their progress. Um, they're actually a little warm. I mean, there's smoke coming off of it, but it's not too hot for me to hold. But I will mix these up a little bit. It's also worth noting that again, the temperature is only reaching 200 degrees on this thermometer. I don't know if there's a problem with the thermometer or what, but it's pretty clear at this point that the pan with the Air World crisper lid is not getting nearly hot enough to properly cook the foods to be able to compete with a traditional air fryer. Okay, let's check the fries. And some of them are definitely a little bit crispier than I would like. But I've just bought this air fryer and I haven't really played around with it to know the cooking times or anything yet. I really just bought it to do a comparison between it and the Air World crisper lid. So in less time, the traditional air fryer was able to get the fries even crispier than I would like, while the fries in the pan with the Air World crisper lid are not even, not even really close to being done. They're definitely hot, but but they're really just soggy. So at this point, I think I've already made up my mind about the Air World crisper lid. They also say that it's good to reheat food, but at this point, I don't think I'm even gonna try that because I have not had very good results with either the chicken tenders or the fries. You can see a very stark contrast between the fries that were cooked in the traditional air fryer versus those cooked in the pan with the Air World crisper lid. I wouldn't say that these are burnt by any means, more crispy than I would like, but I think I would still rather those to the soggy undercooked fries that came out of the pan. So at this point, I am not impressed with the Air World crisper lid. For me, it did not do what it claimed to do. And you saw me check the temperature of the induction cooktop to make sure it was up to par, and it was. I made sure the lid was on tight and that it wasn't hitting the handle and causing a gap or anything like that. Um, the temperature range really never got up much above 200 degrees, so I'm not really sure why it's not cooking like it's supposed to, but it definitely did not. So this is a product that I will not be using again. That's going to do it for this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to the channel. As always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you in the next video.